I, I had driven all the way out to this prison outside of town, you know, for a conjugal visit, and I get all the way out there after that huge long drive, and, and it turns out you had to know somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hola, mis amigos. You're listening to Oh My God, Hi, Hijo de Dios. Hola. With me, George Lopez, porque sabe que let's do the show porque I got a lot of things to do. I got to go to that dry cleaner here by Kim Phelps. Se pegó la cabeza, I got to go get some Neo Spor Spor and Paul. You know who George is? Oh, I'm sure he's around here somewhere. What's his name? George Lopez. George Lopez. Oh my God. OMG. OMG. Hi. Oh my God. Hi. If you're enjoying OMG High, please support our sponsors. First up, we have Sunday Lawn Care. Sunday Lawn Care helps you grow a beautiful lawn without the guesswork or the nasty chemicals. Get 20% off your full season custom plan and go to GetSunday.com slash OMGHI20. That's GetSunday.com slash OMGHI20. Uh, Grant, can you tell us? Yeah, uh, I assume who's joining us on the podcast today. We've got uh, Sean Pulaski and Vicki Barbalak, uh, comedians, actresses, and hosts of the upcoming Trailer Park Diaries podcast. Yeah, oh. we're thrilled to be here. Yeah. Now, first of all, let's talk about your your entrance into comedy. Yeah. Okay. How long have you known each other? Twenty some years. Twenty three years. Twenty four years. Sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. And you met. Uh, up Back in east? the belly room. Oh, really? Yeah. We met in the belly room. At the comedy store. Doing wow. a show, and she said we should have dinner. And she was going to pay for our dinner for going to the belly room, but, but she didn't. A she mutual didn't show friend. Up. A mutual friend. She there, didn't yeah. pay? Yeah. She didn't show up. So oh, we, no. we were there, and we had to buy our own dinner, and it was tough. But anyway, she was a terrible person anyway, so it was kind of a relief <laughs> that she wasn't there. So, um, so we met that night, and I asked her if she would split dinner with me, and she jumped across the table and hit me. Said no. Goes, no. I would never share with you. And no. she, wow. she only ate half her food. It made me so mad. Where, did you guys remember we went to go eat? Mel's? Yeah. Mel's. Mel's oh, Diner. Mel's uh, yeah. down there on Sunset. Yeah. Over yeah. There. Where else are you going to go after the comedy <laughs> well, store? We were served by the yeah. former comedy store managers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was before we discovered Poquito Moss, though, which yeah. was delicious. Poquito Moss is good. There's pinchies right down the street. Oh, yeah. Pinchies tacos. Yes. Been the there, done we that. Were there, like, you were like kind of beyond day-to-day uh, uh, -day at the store. I was already... Listen, I've been around a long time. One time when I was working during the day over there and in, in, uh, in, went to go see a movie, me and a guy at work, and a guy was a pain in the ass. And we went to go eat at some Italian place, and he goes, I don't have my wallet. And I said, I, said, I don't have my wallet. I did, but I told him I didn't. <laughs> so uh, uh, I left to go get money, and I never went back. Nice. I, don't know, I don't know. He's a pain in the ass. He's like the boss's son, you know, so they're like trying to make me hang out with the boss's son. And I said, he goes, I don't have my wallet. And then I, that, that split second when you go, yeah, you know, I don't think I have mine either. I'm clear. And then the waiter was, you know, kind of like back in the days, kind of yeah. like, none of you guys are good. You have yeah. the door. Nobody's leaving. And then yeah. I said, let me go. I'll leave you here, and then I'll go get some money. The old climb That's out of the great. window in the bathroom yeah. trick. Like in Fast Times at Ridgemont yeah. Island. Yeah, I used to do that in synagogue <laughs> all the time, <laughs> Hebrew school. We'd be like, we'll be right back. And then we climbed out of the window and... Went to do, you think, do you think that it's uh, more work to be Jewish than it is to be Catholic? Yeah, look at me. Of course. I think, I I think mean, it is. I'm exhausted. <laughs> <Georgia>. <laughs> because Hebrew school and, and that that's like, it's for life, I think, right? I think yeah, you never stop learning. I mean, 13, a bat mitzvah, that, that's, that's pressure. What's the preparation before a bat mitzvah? Well, you, you meet with the Rebbe, because I like to say Rebbe. You meet with the, the, the rabbi. Is that your rabbi that you've had since you were really young? Not anymore, because I, uh, I grew up Jewish in Oklahoma. So wow. that is, yeah. yeah, take a moment for that, Gil. Um, but it wow. was like a whole thing. So, But I grew up actually conservative Jewish. My parents were from Brooklyn. So we how were, they, you know, there they, wasn't many of us. Did your dad company move to Oklahoma? My father went to medical school at ah. Oklahoma University, and then he established his neurosurgery practice there. Wow. He's a neurosurgeon. He said anyone ever needs a brain surgeon. I mean, <laughs> he's a little shaky now. You don't, wanna, you don't want that in your brain. But you know that, the, yeah, I guess when, when you get a little bit shaky. <laughs> yeah. There goes your eyesight. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. It's like, it's like when <laughs> Willie Mays got old and he tripped running for uh, a baseball, they're like, I think it's time to. Yeah. The, he tripped and yeah. everybody. Everybody in the stadium was like, I think it's time to put Willie out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, okay, so. So you meet with the rabbi, you go to he you go to Hebrew school yeah. for like, 
uh, maybe like, like six, seven years. You go for God a long time. Damn. But then when you have to like practice and learn your half tour and all that, that's like your whole summer. It's Is a lot. Is that a dance, the half tour? Yes, but the half that's, tour. That's a, it's, a, it's a lot. <laughs> and and, and uh, I mean, listen, we had to go to catechism and then we could miss two months and go back. Mm -hmm. I'm glad oh, I was yes. Catholic. Yeah. I wouldn't have put up with all the... I couldn't have no, done it. But there's, there's a reward a to seven that. Seven years, like, though. But there's the reward of the party, well, right? Yeah, you make a lot of money. Like like now you today, kids have. I, I attended my friend's kids' bar mitzvah. She she made like she got a four hundred one k. Like she she <laughs> yeah. made a lot of money, more money than I probably made in my lifetime. And I'm like, what's going on? Like that was the good thing. You got gifts and, and it's a, a big college thing. fund. It, it, it's like uh, um, there's not strangers that you invite. It's all family and friends. It's a big deal. Well, you know, maybe a couple of strangers. Yeah. you know, <laughs> depending how Wealthy rich they strangers. look. <laughs> Yeah. You remember Come when you, when you have confirmation, when you get like a, a pinata, nothing? I mean, we didn't uh, get anything like that as Catholics. You know, Did you do confirmation? Well, in Mexico, you could tell how, you know, pinata was like very elegant. But in Mexico, they have a thing called the bolo where they take change and the guy will stand in the middle of the room <laughs> or the backyard and throw the money in the air. <laughs> and then all the kids run after it and they... Bump, hit each other oh, in the head, yeah. and they knock God. each other out, and they're fighting over coins. That's interesting. And the bolo, yeah, you get the, you learn to get the hell out of the way. But my daughter got trampled uh, because my wife had, uh, you know, the kids were hitting the piñata in the backyard, and it wouldn't bust. Their kids are like four years old, so she really kind of tore it, and it kind of went like Carrie, you know, like all the candy all, all over her, <laughs> and she's standing there like this, and those kids <laughs> attacked her. Yeah. And she went down and faced in the, you know, they're just kind of grabbing all the yeah. candy around her. Yeah. And you're like, that's not, you know. They're so dangerous. Those we always members. had them too, and I always thought it was just because I was white and I didn't know how to operate them. But I think they're dangerous for everybody. I mean, there's never a time when somebody's not going to get hurt. You know, it. I've seen enough Sopranos where you you just give somebody an envelope, you know, it's like, <laughs> yeah. hey, yeah. God, you know, God bless, you know, they give you the envelope, they put them in the thing, you know, uh, and then uh, what did they say that one time in the Sopranos, like the guys got busted and the guys went back there and go, they were looked in the bag and they were grabbing their envelopes back like, like, shit, like <laughs> yeah. they took the guy away, we're taking our money back. Yeah. But but seven years is, a, and do you do you remember the, is it like a driver's license? Like if you, if you pass... Hebrew school that you never have to worry about going back? See, it, uh, you know what? It, it, it was like uh, it, v very fortunate. I got to study. I didn't have a bar mitzvah alone. I had a B'nai bar mitzvah, which ah. is two. So my sister and I were pretty close in age. Not like Irish twins close, but we were close enough that you know all, all our relatives lived in New York. So if they had to go back and forth to yeah, Oklahoma, which to nobody to. wants to do from New York. <laughs> so we, we studied together. So we had our bar mitzvah together. So we both took turns torturing the rabbi, which is basically what you do through those sessions. And it's just like you don't want to commit to it, but you know that you have to because there's the pressure you from the to. family and you got to get it right. And when you have to sing Hebrew, I'm not a good singer. I mean, I, although I look like one, yeah. I do, I, I sing terribly. I sing terribly. And so, and, and that's- But you have a deep voice. Like you have a voice yeah. like you would be a good singer. Well, my balls just dropped, George. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. other than that, but it- I bet my balls drop a lot more. I'm older than you. <laughs> they're, they're down there. I mean, you're like, what the fuck, man? <laughs> if you let them hang, they're going to drop. But if yeah. you, I, you know, if you wear underwear- there's some support, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah, we have the bra concept yeah. for the yeah. same reason. It's, yeah. a, it's an awful thing, too. Ours is yeah. on top. Yours is on bottom. You know, when you get to the age where you look better clothed? <laughs> yeah. When you just like, a, like when you have sex, it's like when you go have surgery, <laughs> they just isolate that one area. Or maybe they just put oh, a, a sheet over you with a hole in there. Oh, your penis yeah. is out there. Uh, no Amish touching. sex. That's, that's all <laughs> I ever do anymore. Wait, are we supposed to have sex with, without our clothes on? <laughs> Was that a yeah. thing? Yeah. <laughs> So so, uh, um, and and who, who entertained? Who what enter, who, what entertainment did you have at your at my party? Day? Yeah. Well, we had our party in the the backyard. We lived on a lake, and uh, we just had this really lovely big backyard. So it was just a band, and um, you know we didn't have like uh, P Diddy perform or anything I know, like but that. They do know. Nobody. They just like I know the they do. I know they do. They just do like some the big time yeah. shit now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I yeah. mean, they go. You know, my daughter went to uh, Campbell Hall, and around that age, she came back with a picture of, of her and an elephant. 
And I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck is <you> an <laughs> elephant? <laughs> Uh, at the at the bat mitzvah, the girl had an ele- like an elephant, like a circus. Yeah, as you do. And then they had a, 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 a book leaflet. I said, what's this book? Oh, they made this book at the party. And you open it up, and it's pictures of all of her friends and the girl. And you're like, they fucking made books? Yeah, they <laughs> yeah. had a it's guy crazy. back there making books. It's and, crazy. And, and yeah, there's them. a lot going yeah. on today. But, you know, at least she didn't bring Shlomo the elephant home. No. So. That would have been a problem. But, and now it is, but it was never about like how much money you had. It was a ceremony. Yeah. But they've turned it into how much money you have. Mm-hmm. Right, exactly. Well, it's a, it's a production. It's bigger than a wedding. It's bigger than a wedding. You have to go on a diet if you're a mom for months. Yeah. You have to get <laughs> okay, what yeah. do you mean? Mm-hmm. All my Jewish girlfriends, they, they go do. on a diet before the kids bar mitzvahs for like a it's year. It's a big deal. Oh, so yeah. you, you have to look, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to like two next month. And now it's like every other friend's kid is getting bar right. bar mitzvahed. So... You know, what's the proper amount? Like a thousand? Oh, to give? Yeah. Well, for you, George, it is. No, no, um, but what, for no, me, a couple hundred. No, a couple, couple hundred. hundred. Couple hundred. Oh wow! And how many people go to one typically? Well, um, I mean, I've been to ones that were like five hundred, and I've been okay. to ones that were like a hundred. It just depends, especially in like the time of COVID mm-hmm. or whatnot. People sometimes they. You know, when Less. I was in 2009, when I was flying around, I was going to do my HBO special. I was going between Houston and San Antonio, and we were at the Houston Four Seasons. And, I, you know, we've been drinking. We're on a private plane. We get back to the hotel, and I tell the, the bellman, what's the biggest tip that you ever got? And he goes, somebody gave me 500 bucks. I said, bullshit. For what? For bringing the bags up. Somebody gave me 500 bucks. So I said, okay, well, put your hands out. And I gave him 600 bucks. Huh. And then I said, who gave you 500 bucks? And he goes, you did last Saturday. No! <laughs> I, I said, he goes, you didn't say who, you said what. Oh, that's so I fucking awesome. had no idea <laughs> that I gave him 500 bucks. God, you know what? We look, like when I waited tables, we look for people like you, George, to come in and tip us. And I used to work at it, Neiman Marcus in Beverly Hills in oh. a restaurant downstairs, the Mariposa. I bring Vicky in all the time. Who would you, who would you see in there? Oh, and, everybody. Okay, Ready? We would have Nancy Reagan. Oh. Then we'd have Jodie Foster at the bar. Whoa. Then we'd have like the Prince of Dubai would come in, so they clear the store. Uh, Stevie Nicks. I waited on uh, Kathy Bates. I waited on Roseanne there. I remember her going, um, and I didn't tell her I was a comic, and she's like, what should I order? And I was like, the lobster cob. And she's like, why? And I'm like, because it's the most expensive. <laughs> like, people came yeah. in all the time. But it was kind of like Saturday Night Live in there because it was just a cast of characters and people that would come in. And these people, just everyone had so much money. They would just run the shit out of you. And it's lunch. It's fucking lunch. <laughs> run the shit out of why you. do I have to be like, darling, could you do me a favor? Could you go upstairs to the third floor and get me low-fat yogurt? No, wow. I can't. I, I'm, I'm running around. There were a lot of tables, and everybody was very high maintenance. And, and, and uh, but, you, but you saw a lot of comedians in the... Uh, um, yeah. yeah, so they would go in there and have lunch, yeah. right? Like it was like a cafeteria? Yeah. I had Sugar Ray Leonard. I mean, name it. Everybody and anybody. The best one was George Michael. He came in one day, and the restaurant was empty because it was like four o'clock before it closed, and it, I was the only one on. Whoa. And I, I didn't know there was all these like Japanese girls lining up outside the restaurant, which was just like, what's going on here? And then you heard screaming, and then he came in, and then he sat down, and he was very polite and nice, and it was... It was like right after the whole uh, uh, caught in the park mm. thing. So, uh, but he was he. That was probably the biggest, the biggest celebrity I ever. You know, you think with as much you know gay activity as we have in West Hollywood, which yeah. is right down the street yeah. from, from Beverly Hills. Yeah, I'm very from involved that park. in that whole gay activity. <laughs> it's just in a, a mile from touching toes in the park. Uh huh. That, you know, he just go to uh, uh, one of those bars out there, High Tops or, you know, Fiesta Cantina. Not that I know. But, uh, <laughs> but you know, I think it's easy to get blown, especially during the day. Yeah. I've never you don't... been invited out there. <laughs> well. <laughs> Gil, would you like to go? Uh, <laughs> hold on. I was what, just there yesterday. Let me see what yesterday. shoes you're wearing so I can tell if I can touch your toes. But um, <laughs> I saw George Michael in the mid-'80s walk with, I would presume it was his manager, across the street. And he had, like... Designer jeans. He was very thin. He had a black V-neck mm-hmm. uh, sweater on. He had the Caesar haircut, 
and he had those like big Versace glasses and like dingo boots, like beetle boots. Mm -hmm. And that motherfucker looked sexy. I would have blown sexy. Him. I yeah. said, God. They, they honked at me. I had to keep going. But I mean, <laughs> he looked like a Greek god. Mm -hmm. he, he he was, was in, that. He was in his he was in his element. He's walking like this and not mm -hmm. an ounce of fat on him. And you're mm -hmm. just like, whoa, yeah. man. Yeah, like me, it was beautiful. Know? I mean, like so, when I walked in, you said the same thing. You look at me like that. I put it down my phone. Like that. I put it down in my phone. It was a little uh, life affirming. Office did Tony Fields ever go in there? No, she. <laughs> no, no. So, no, how, no. so how did you? Uh, how did you? How did you guys find your way to comedy? Go ahead, Vicky. So I was like forty when I started, and I literally. I love that. Yeah, I started. I, I took Sandy Shore Polly's uh, sister's class comedy class in, in La Jolla and I just you know just did it for a lark and then I started loving it and Mitzi saw me about a year after that in, in La Jolla one night and she made me regular for Hollywood I didn't even know what a paid regular was I had no idea no shit no idea I didn't know but you had been already in, a fan of comedy before yeah, right yeah I was just so like so sheltered I didn't I literally didn't know I, I, I never I went to the comedy store in Hollywood one time Never saw any live shows, just listened to records, didn't date a lot. Anyway, so I didn't know much. <laughs> hey, listen, man. No, Listen, nobody who's the life of the party is going to become a fucking comedian. Exactly. You have to be in there where they're like, dude, get some sun, man. You walk yeah. out and you're flaky, all kind of shit on you because yeah. you're the... Doing comedy is the last fucking resort yeah. of show business. I mean, you know, you could be a fucking fire breather, but, you know... You could do that with nobody around. To be a comedian, you have to be like, I mean, listen, John Bobby got his dick cut off and it, it sewed it back on. It didn't attach the right way. And he said, I think I'm going to become porn, a comedian. Exactly. He did porn, porn. then he did stand up. <laughs> You're like going to comedian, I'm like, porn. But there's a bunch of fucking, Cato Kalin did did uh, uh, stand up and uh, Rock, Rocky Laporte. Yeah. John Mayer. I heard Putin's John putting together Mayer five minutes right now. Does so like, does he not oh, get yeah, enough does, pussy? Right. Like, dude, <laughs> yeah. like, bring it down. We got you. You're a rock star. Just stay in that lane. But you know when you get a lot of pussy, you, you don't appreciate it because you're kind of on the bottom of the barrel. You're like, this is only because I'm funny. It's not... Any other, but you know, it's all right. That's the way I feel. <laughs> I, think it, though, I think it works different for women because... As a comedian, that when if a woman is standing on stage, she's funny. You can just see some of the men's faces in the audience, and I I, I feel like it was harder to pull I, dick, and I, so to the point where I had to trick trick you, them into marrying. You know what? I think that's. <laughs> did you meet your husband in a club? Uh, yes and no, and it was only because <laughs> a gay friend brought his coworkers to the club to see me. So I knew he who my friend was bringing and he had told me that one ah. of them was Brazilian. So I'm not dumb, wasn't born yesterday. Like wow. my men brown, thank you. And uh, I knew that he was coming. So I kind of set my eyes on him, but didn't think much. And th so the first time he did see me was in the club. Wow. Yeah. And how did you do? Um, I did okay. I picked on him and I picked on uh, the Argentinian do in the front what row. You, did you remember what you said to him? Uh, well, I yeah, I gave him a hard because I had people from New Zealand in the front row, two guys, and I was talking about how they're probably uncircumcised, and and then I kind of went into a bit there, and then I said, oh, Rafael, you're from Brazil, you know, you've you've got a sneaky snake, and he goes, come on, and then that was what I had said to him. So then um, I pit him against the there was a woman from Argentina, and so I just I think it was just like foreign person night and I just was kind of improvising with the crowd. Is there a personality trait of an uncircumcised person versus a circumcised guy? Can you tell? Usually who's South American. <laughs> <laughs> we'll start there. <laughs> You know, yeah, so. because it's like, what do they call it? Like an anteater? There's a bunch of names for it. <laughs> yeah, we call it a sneaky snake. <laughs> sneaky snake. The German helmet versus yeah, the yeah. anteater. Yeah. You know. It's the whole thing. It's the whole thing. <laughs> Ro like names of robots. <laughs> uh, the helmets versus the sleeping bag. But Vicky, Vicky, yeah, tell him how you yeah. met your your third husband. Oh, yeah. Lou is my favorite so far. He's a <laughs> piano player in La Jolla. At the comedy so, store. Yeah. Oh, at the comedy yeah. store. Yeah. yeah, he's been there forever. And you've been married three times? Yeah, yeah. I'm on a roll. Wow. He's no, no. So, 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 uh, um, what was? Who was the first comedian that you saw that made that made an impact on you guys? For me personally, it, it, I don't know if it'd be stand up wise. It was Bette Midler. Yeah, amazing. That just that just the way she is an entertainer, 
in all shapes and like the, the, just what she does. I mean, one mo moment she can have you crying when she's singing and the next minute, you know, somebody, I've seen her in concert and someone's like, we love you, Ben. She's like, I know, honey, but you're gay. You know, she just yeah, is she like she's so, so fast, fast and, yeah. and versatile. And you know, when you saw the rose, which uh, was kind of like Janis Joplin's story. Right, aren't yeah. you waiting for them to try and remake that? I don't think I feel they like, fuck with that. Oh, but they will at yeah. some point. Yeah. yeah. Did you ever see The Rose? Yes. It's very good, huh? Yeah. Because uh, she just was like a force of nature, man. Still she could is. dance. She could sing to the Bugle Boy. And she was funny. And yeah. she was pretty amazing. She could rock. And she, you know, still is. She's dynamic. Still amazing, yeah. Everything. I met her twice. And I scared the shit out of her. But uh, that when I met her, oh, my God. Did anybody like that ever see you do stand-up? Ever see you guys do stand-up? I, I, Phyllis Diller was, like, for me, just growing up, and I loved her so much. And I did a show called Funniest Mom in America, and she was judging that night. And and she, when I found out she was there, I just lost it. I was like, no, I'm going to really meet Phyllis Diller. That fucking laugh was I, amazing. I was, so yeah, she was scary. Yeah. That's so, so I, awesome. Yeah, and that night she got to see me perform, and she's like, you know, I love you. And I was like, oh. But she laughed loud. And didn't give a fuck if it was popping. Ha ha! Like didn't care who was in the room. Like she she didn't chuckle laugh. She laughed. Yeah. She laughed big. And men had yeah. big big balls back then. I mean, not that they don't now, but they but they don't have as big a balls as they used to in no. general. I think we have to you know the tapping it down. But back then, I mean, she was like in the room with just big big giant ego giant men comics, and she always like held her own. It was always she was so amazing. amazing. But that laugh. Like yeah, had to so. make you feel good when you hear somebody laugh like that. I, I wrote uh, for Fashion Police for a little bit for Joan Rivers, and oh, I remember being just so frightened the first day. And you're sitting around a table full of writers, and everyone is better than the next. And it's like, oh, here you go, and you got to deliver your ten right. jokes about one picture of Rihanna, and right. it's the same Chris Brown shit joke. Right. You know, you're like, how do I find something different to say? And she had this system where if 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 she liked your joke, she kind of like she'd pat the back of the chair, and her head writer would write it down, ah. and that would be a joke she'd use for the show the next wow. day. And so, if you heard her laugh and you saw her do the pat that that, or she used your joke, that meant everything. Like that was a moment where I was like, I can't believe I'm sitting in a room with Joan Rivers. Amazing. Yeah. You know, I when Joan Rivers was on my talk show, I said. You know, I had the biggest crush on you when I was growing up. She goes, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> See the way I looked. I uh, said, remember that uni remember that Uniroyal commercial you had for tires? She goes, yeah. I go, that would do it for me. What? She had this kind of <laughs> uni uni Uniroyal tire. And she'd walk uh, out. And uh, we had uh, a contest. We had a swear jar. And her and I went back and forth and had money. Um, and we would just put it into this jar. And I'd say, my grandmother was a bitch. And she goes, my mom was a slut. We just put money in there. <laughs> <laughs> the thing oh, amazing, fun. amazing. Yeah. yeah. God. I mean, you know, I, I think that, you know, people like that, that like you can, you can feel their comedy like in them. You know, when you see them, they're already like, I mean, I saw Richard Pryor in front of the comedy store. And it just looked different. They almost looked like they were, were elevated beyond, you know, I saw Letterman in the early 80s. And, mm. you know, I've seen I've seen everybody, talked to everybody. But it, it uh, I don't know, you know, I think social media kind of diluted the significance of the stand-up comedian. Mm -hmm. You know, like Bill Burr and those guys, like, you know, they're always at the comedy store, which is amazing, you know. But yeah. there's a lot of people that are YouTube influencers and, you know, they kind of, pee in the pool you know yeah <laughs> Where, it's hard to get your head around them because you know you don't see them in the clubs but yet you know they sell out six shows uh, all the time every and you're like well that's, you know what are they i know and you know, i mean I can't, I can't work cameras and film and but know, if they things. if they are out of their element they don't they can't survive yeah it's funny though they they do have these loyal fans that just show up and they, yeah it is but you wonder how long it's going to last how long it's sustainable for it till they get another but who knows it's just an interesting thing that's going on yeah and you guys husbands get along with each other oh yeah yeah, yeah. I mean they're so different and so ex like extreme extreme so Brazilian like, and 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 a Jew she married the Jewish guy wow yeah 
And he's how high is all the time? We he's call fine. him Pot. His name's Lou. Lou Brockman. Pop Brockman. Pop Brockman. Pop Brockman. <laughs> yeah, he's just a <laughs> totally high piano player. He can't hear a thing. That's why the only reason he's still with me. He <laughs> 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 tell, and deaf. Tell him the book that you're writing with the well, title. I'm writing is. a book. It's true. It's called Your Husband Hates the Sound of Your Voice. <laughs> 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 I just finished with my editor a few minutes ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. It's hard to imagine, but spring is almost here. We're so close to feeling that soft grass under our feet, but first we need to get our lawn back. Thankfully, Sunday gets your lawn growing and helps to keep it healthy all season long. Sunday can help you grow a beautiful lawn without the guesswork or the nasty chemicals. Their custom plans include fertilizer and everything you need to easily care for your lawn. And with ingredients like seaweed, iron, and molasses, you can feel good with kids and pets being around it too. All you have to do is visit sunday.com, put in your address, and the lawn analysis tool does the rest. They then use soil and climate data to create a personal nutrient plan delivered to your door right when you need it. And best of all, uh, this stuff just really works. Uh, my favorite part is the easy delivery. Like I'm, I'm a delivery man, this is the 21st century. I would love anything that can come straight to my door. Uh, so, you know, that's one of my favorite parts here. So Sunday is offering our listeners 20% off Full season plans start at just $129, and you can get 20% off at checkout when you visit GetSunday.com slash O-M-G-H-I-20. That's 20% off your custom plan at GetSunday.com slash O-M-G-H-I-20. When, when, you, when you started to do stand-up, did you feel like your life was was going in a good direction like to be around comedy and to be writing it like uh, right in, immediately like i had been selling carpet for 20 years in my <laughs> parents business and i was not the employee of the month ever they hated me and i was miserable the whole time it was awful and uh and so i just thought i was gonna have a miserable life i love being a mom but other than that i married the wrong men i was just miserable and i thought that's how i, I, got, I picked a miserable life and that's it i never thought it would change i didn't know that it would change i thought yeah. it was done and then i just took this little class and i we started going to open mics, and I and I told my parents in a few years just sell the store. I don't want it, and I just jumped wow. into a trailer. I bought a trailer with my daughters, and we moved into a trailer, and we just were poor for like we we're, were happy. I'm so glad I did. You bought the trailer. You went and looked at it. You a walked inside for of it. Thousand bucks from a transgender lady with a whole closet full of guns and gowns. And, uh, <laughs> and it was just, <laughs> just great. And what was she doing? She was selling it. She to... was selling it. She was moving on, like to Tennessee or something. Wow. And so my she liked my daughter Emily, and she gave us like five thousand bucks off. I bought it for eleven thousand. Oh my god. And we just started living the trailer life, and it had just been great. So you lived the trailer life, but did you live the trailer life? <laughs> no. Uh, I I did not live the trailer. A Jew in a trailer, they'd come no. and get you like that. Come That's on, right. we're, 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 we're That's rescuing unicorn. you. Get out of here. You don't belong you in here. You're taking in a rail car to a trailer park. Uh, uh, That's the only way it's cold it. in this trailer. Yeah. Uh, no, I didn't. I was I was fortunate. Uh, I I I grew up pretty well and went to USC. And uh, thank you, fight on, thank right on. you. And then uh, I, I went to, I always acted as a little kid. Oh. So I always liked uh, comedy in that sense because I thought my path would be more of an SNL. I always did characters right. yeah. and impersonations. So I was always in school plays and drama contests and just always, you know, I had a very funny family. And so when I went on to USC and then I majored in the School of Theater, which was very productive, really helpful towards sure. my career. Hmm. And then when uh, <laughs> I was studying at USC, I took with the Groundlings and I was in class with like Will Ferrell. And I saw him as like a bank teller. Wow, and then I just man. watched like how people's careers changed after working with all these great people. Was Will people. Ferrell a bank teller? He was a bank teller at the time. Oh, wow. Also graduate of USC. And so I kind of just fell into stand-up. That was like, I'll take a stand-up class when I graduated college. And I did it like once for that first year. And I still stuck with sketch comedy. And then something about me was just like, you know, we're not really bringing in a bunch of audiences here at Acme Comedy Theater. And I started doing stand-up here and there. And that's like when I would do shows in the belly room. Yeah. And I saw 
when I saw Vicky on stage, because she's just like this beast of one-liners, and she was such a killer writer, and she was such a character already. She, she didn't need a point of view. It was all there. She lived in a trailer. Yeah. She was a mother, a, like a single mother of two at the time, and she was just dynamic. And I thought, God, you know, she really watching her make someone like myself step up their game, right. and. And yeah, we came from such different backgrounds, but yet... And I, I was like so blown away by her because there, there weren't that many women back then working. There really no. weren't. And uh, and so it was just so fun to, to find her. You all right? Yeah. I'm just you okay? Right. little gas or something? Yeah, a little gas. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're sitting on the chair sideways. That's probably why. What's in the red can? Beer. Huh. What kind yeah, of beer yeah. is that beer? is a, a sour hibiscus beer. Please, Please can I have that? Direct the chair for this. George, are yeah. you, do you, do you, do you yeah, design yeah. these flavors yeah. yourself? And do you, do that you, might be sour for you, but this is like oh, an I like orange. Sour. This no, is I like an, the sour too. Oh yeah. Oh. What is that Beyonce on the front? No, it's some Chicana that looks like Beyonce. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that or I have to pay her. I always keep her on the other side of the camera. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is great. But but I saw. It's really good. Who did I see when I when I was still in high school? Also, I have another hotel story. How many calories are in this? Uh, we, you know, we don't, we don't count. We don't count. Okay, yeah. it's delicious. You know, uh, less than if it was a thirty-two ounce. Thank you. The uh, <laughs> so, so I was in Corpus Christi, the Omni, and then I come down. We're still flying the same week, and then there's a guy that's having his fortieth anniversary. Uh, did I tell you that story already? I don't think so. You're no. right. Yeah, I'm fine. Don't do fucking. It's like. Uh, you know, like a chaplain thing. Like I'm talking, he's, <laughs> he's trying to get into the chair. Call it about. Uh, it's like then, me and the rabbi. Yeah. You all right? You all right? <laughs> and then the, uh, uh, the, there was a guy that was kind of, you know, like this, and it said, congratulations on 40 years, you know, retirement. And someone had drawn a dick with it in his mouth <laughs> and balls. And I was like, oh, man. I said, this is awful. Man. I love I said, that, though. This fucking guy's going to come over here. His family's going to see the picture. And somebody drew a dick and balls. <laughs> And the, the bellman goes, you, you drew that last night when you got to the... <laughs> <laughs> no, well done. And I said, and then he said, you didn't give him my Sharpie back. I'm like, oh, all right. Well, I'll put the fucking up in my room. That's but I guess I, when I was blacked out, I, I probably was a vandal. I love That's when probably their prized possession in their life. The one, I was just the having George a good time. Like, you Lopez, know, if... if, balls if, and, dick. if uh, and, and, you know, I pissed off a lot of people, but it's like, if I wanted to conform, I would have stayed working during the day. Yeah, I think at some point, when you do something that's different than everybody else, you have to be about that. You know, race car drivers when they drive, they could die, and comedians, the, the, you got to go up, and eventually, whether you're trying to duck it or not, like I always say, said to my wife, you know, eventually you have to put them up. Right. Like you can get a good crowd, you can catch yourself a couple times, and then when you do, you don't do good when there's not a lot of people. But you got to do good whether there's five people or 500 right. people. Yep. And at some point, you got to put them up. Yeah, it's I, true. I felt like Mitzi Shore, because she was taking on a bunch of female comics at the time. Vicky and I got past because she wanted to bring women back into the belly yeah. room to kind of yep. ease the energy. Because I guess back in the day, that's when it was really it at was its height. Yeah. And so when she passed Vicky and I, it was just, it was. That's Such a pretty big deal. That's a pretty big deal to get past Mitzi Shore. It was great. And we were, we're lucky, you know, because, you know, she didn't get to work with that many more people. Right. So we were just like, the, you know, the tail end. And then, you know, then when you realize what you got, when she had me over to her house for the first time. And I was like so shaky. And she goes, go up and take a nap. And she said the right. <laughs> she yeah. was the first door on the right. And the, the stairway went two different ways. So I just oh, laid on the wow. tile. I didn't wow. want to disturb a bed. And I, <laughs> God, Did they have beds up there? <laughs> up there? And I was just like, oh, it was, just, it was so much fun being with her. And, 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 ha ha and the way she works with you, what she does secretly, you know, to make you get better. It, it was um, well, You know what? That's pretty good because nobody's ever talked about that. Like, everybody thought, you know, she was pretty hard on comedians. And, and rightly, like, you wouldn't think she was paying attention. And she sat there in the back yeah. with, like, a little light. You could see the glasses yeah. hanging at the tip of her nose. And she was paying attention. Yep. Mm. Oh, yeah. You know, she could look down and she could look up and she could – and was always paying attention, you know. Yeah. But, but, but the story behind that is if you – were trying to become a regular at the comedy store when you were showcasing in front of Mitzi Shore in LA. Every comic tried to cock block you while you were showcasing. Uh, She'd sit in the back of the room and comics would purposely come up to talk uh, to her. 
And so they would distract her, but she was smarter than that. But I saw it so many times, and it was like vicious. Yeah. You know, I uh, spoke at Richard Pryor's funeral, you know, and um, David Banks, who was, did you guys ever meet David no. Banks? David Banks was as funny as Richard Pryor. Wow. Mm-hmm. I mean, he was, he was uh, really funny, like hood funny like that. And he was an usher at Richard's uh, funeral, and he and I are standing in the middle of the Little White Chapel at Forest Lawn, and we see somebody really tiny, Aww. just all this hair, and it's Mitzi. She's mm-hmm. walking, and she's got the you know program in her hand, and when she passes us, David Banks catches her on the arm, mm-hmm. and he goes, don't leave, you'll be back Wednesday. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> Oh my, oh my god! Oh my god! I fucking brutal. told her that's she'll so be back. Well, I was like, oh, I can just see your face. Oh my oh, god! I so ran great. outside. He goes, "Where the fuck did you go?" I said, "Man, I ran outside, dude." I was like, uh, "The timing of it." You don't because want to be because he let her, he saw her here and he let her get by here and then went like that. Oh, it's that's like great. just <laughs> that's the so timing great. of it was amazing. God. Is he still around, David? Banks? No, he passed. Oh, unfortunately, oh, I wonder if we could find him anywhere online. Anybody? I think you could. Yeah, yeah. He did. Oh. He did all of the Richard Pryor. Uh, type shows and stuff like that. Oh, neat! You know, there was a lady golfer that I played golf with up in La Quinta, and she lived in a in a mobile home. What what's that? Like, I had friends growing up yeah. in San Fernando that lived yeah in mobile homes. And when you're yeah. like in fifth grade, you think it's cool to ride your bike through a a, yeah. a trailer park. I still I still love the way the sunlight hits the aluminum at sunset. <laughs> I think it's so romantic. Yeah. But you know what, Vicky Vicky does live in a glam. I mean, a very you live in a glamorous. I live in the 1970s. You don't live in like it's not very glamorous. You still do? I think it is. Oh yeah. If I can stay I, I, I in it, put it's in glamorous. A pool in my own yard, I got a corner lot. No shit. I don't want to brag. Top of the hill. Ever since AGT, things have really changed. Yeah. Yeah. It's still the same person inside, but fuck, I got the bitch and trailer. It's beautiful. Yeah, that's right. You <laughs> saw America's Got Talent? Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's, Vicky was a finalist. It was cold. Hey. It was killing me. Trailer nasty old thank yes. you. Yes. That's so I, nice. I thank remember you. you. Yeah. Thanks. And you know what? Great that's run. that's not a fucking easy thing to do. It was it was a it was a um you know I've been doing it I solidly for 20 years before that and you know, it's like because I was old and fat when I started, and but I it, it was back to the time when people weren't looking at different people, so I could never get anyone in LA besides Missy to look at me. So, but I just kept loving it and doing it. That AGT thing, the way that takes America around the industry, uh, no was question. the best thing that ever yeah. happened. Mm-hmm. So, and I enjoyed the whole process. The two two minute thing, it was like a Zen thing. At first, I'm like, this isn't comedy, this is bullshit. And then the more I got into those two, how minutes, many how many jokes in, uh, can you do in two minutes? Five. It just depends. You could do one long two minute joke or two or three you know just I put little index cards together and the bartender at La Jolla Comedy Store just say and wow, I would play the bar <laughs> the cards yeah, out yeah but anyway yeah it was a I'm year I'm six long. I'm three a minute yeah well you know oh I was three a minute isn't that funny how you can know that yeah oh, you, you can know that yeah I don't have that answer and did you and, did, and you always have I think one of the toughest things to do is to find like a solid opening line Totally. It has to be the opening and the end, right? You put whatever you want you, in the middle. You open that. Was it trophy Why? I mean, I Vicky used, just, yeah. I mean, it, to watch Vicky over the years she work so me. hard and and get, you know, the the props that she deserved. I mean, she got a standing ovation yeah, her first time amazing. out. And I would have cracked and totally laid down and died. But to watch. <laughs> what, what was your first set? What was your first set to get a standing oh. ovation? I mean, that's. Oh God! You walked out there. They were probably laughing oh, I know. already. I think it was. Uh, I think it was. Uh, it was. Uh, it was trophy. I mean, like nobody you're looking at me like you never saw a trophy wife in Hollywood. But then, <laughs> but then it was. Uh, uh, it was very very bad rain in San Diego. Uh, you know, it never rains and people can't drive. And uh, I, I had driven all the way out to this prison outside of town, you know, for a conjugal visit. And I get all the way out there after that huge long drive and. And it turns out you had to know somebody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 so. yeah. That's so, awesome. Yeah. And it is. Incredible. And then when you go out there, so you have to judge between the applause and when to start. Yeah. Right? Exactly. You know, because when you go out there and they see you and they start laughing, like, oh, shit, they, uh, they're tripping out on you, but you can't it must last be like, too long. When you're in, like, um, you know, I've not been, you know, I've very rarely been in big theaters, more than, like, 1,500 people. But, like, I would imagine at your level, because, like, where you two are, how big your spaces are, that must become, like, a real nightly decision because there's so many people out there to see you and you want to acknowledge that they've spent that money and they're here to see you. Yeah. But then you also want to go, I don't want to be an, an asshole with, uh, you know, I got to do this. It was a, It's a process. Because you know it, it was I was when I got the first show like 20 years ago I was still in clubs, and then I went to theaters and then 
in like three years. I was like in arenas. Yeah. And yeah. I remember I fired this guy that was a DJ because we were in Austin at the at UT where the University mm-hmm. of Texas plays basketball. And he gets up there and he comes up behind me and he goes, Jesus Christ, this is going to be full of people. You're not nervous? I said, man, you're fired, dude. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> this motherfucker, no, I'm not nervous, but if you are, you, you got to go. That's funny. So in the, in the, in the trailer park life, uh, I mean, there's trans. I mean, you do meet you such pop, good characters, but beautiful I mean, they're not people. bad people. No, there's no. there's some there's some wackos and there's some beautiful people. Like the other day, I'm not kidding. This this woman. She has a good friend of mine. She she's like 85. Her name is Carol, and she's been diagnosed with Parkinson's the last couple of years. And literally, I'm at the pool because we hang out at our pool all the time. It's heated. 20, I don't want to brag, but anyway, so she, we're sitting by the pool, and she puts her hand on my hand, and she said, you know, Vicky, you know, I just want you to know as you get older, you know, Ron and I, we still have sex, and I still have multiple orgasms. And I'm like, maybe it's the Parkinson's. Because that, <laughs> I mean, that's just, she's sitting around the pool telling me this. I'm like, that's amazing. But I just love the things you hear at the pool and the people. It's just fantastic. I know, I mean, we have yeah. a golf cart parade every year. It's just, yeah, it's, it couldn't be better. But you know, the, the, that, um, you know, comedy is really about meeting characters, you yeah. know, about, about, being around, about being around characters. Yeah. So, you know, me and a friend of mine from high school, he goes, hey, I got us a job as like landscapers on Saturday over there on Van Nuys. And he gets there and we get there and the guy has the trays of of, of little plants that, you know, we have the, the thing, he and I are, and then, you know, out there, and this fucking guy's got a huge yard. He's got like a thousand of these little, like planting fucking cupcakes in a football field. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, son of a bitch. And, and toward the end of the day, you end up getting a little bit sloppy, man. And the guy would yell at me from the porch, you're stepping on my varieties. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea. I guess that's what they call me, the different, uh, different flowers. And every time I took a step, I stepped in more of his varieties. I'm like, so <laughs> this guy. But then sometimes uh, when I get uh, uh, together with that guy, and we've known each other for like 40 years, I'll say, you're stepping on my varieties. <laughs> <laughs> we saw, I sold area code books door to door in mm. by, by the VA hospital in Van Nuys. Oh, my God. Yeah, they, they go, what kind of book is it? Well, let's say you have some friends in Montana. I don't have friends in Montana. Well, let's say you do, and you need to know the area code. I mean, imagine selling a fucking <laughs> book of <laughs> area codes, and you would leave. <laughs> That's hilarious. You would leave a paper in the morning and then circle back. And the fact, even if somebody opened the door, you'd be like, just like, thank you for opening the door. Oh, we don't want God, your fucking God. book, but at least we're opening the door for you. Like, oh. And you're just like, what the fuck? That's fuck is it? Uh, and, uh, and area code book. <laughs> yeah, and you think comedy's hard. Oh yeah. my god! Yeah, try exactly. selling area I code books. I got the keys books. in my trunk. God. Fucking. Oh, oh no. no! We were finally done. I put it all all the books in there. I slammed the books, and he goes, "My guy Arnold goes, where's you? Where are the keys?" Uh, I said, that, "I thought you had the keys, and we locked them in the." Fucking oh, trunk. We had to man. walk, get the fucking bus, and oh, walk off. Oh, oh God! God. And stepping on varieties all the way back. <laughs> but I mean, you know, it, it, it's it's kind of like um, those people that you meet. That uh, I had a guy with cerebral palsy that I was helping he was from Indiana, and I said, you know, Dan, fly out, <laughs> fly out here, and you can stay with me, and I'll get you a couple of gigs. And he says to, I mean, he had a hard time walking, and he said, if I fall, don't pick me up. Because I have to learn to to pick myself up. Hmm. This motherfucker fell every ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so I would, we would just be talking to my grandma here. And you're like, oh. So I would look around the corner, and you could see his cane in the air oh like this. Like he's, he's on his back, and the cane is like this, oh. <laughs> it, like it, in the air, but he's on his back, and like oh. like a turtle. You would at least fucking roll him over. So I go, Dan, you need some help? No, I'm fine. Fucking cane in the air. And then 20 minutes later, and you're just like, fuck little Dan, man. And then you didn't want to pick him up there. You're like, fuck him. He falls every 10 minutes. I'm not fucking going there. I got shit to do. Oh, that's hilarious. But I mean, the, 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 the characters that you that you meet, you know, um, and, the, and the podcast you guys haven't, you haven't premiered yet, right? No. No, no, it's going to be it, soon, though, but it, within it, moments. Yeah, <laughs> uh, March 22nd. It, You know, I think kind of just features really, because Vicky and I, we're an unlikely pair Talk of completely. besties. 
Yeah. And we're kind of like the, you know, a little more modern day ab you, fab. You go, you, 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 oh, total, I totally took her to fucking a thrift absolutely store. fabulous. I bought some used lipstick. Okay, She's wait, still start not over right there. It. She She's took me to a thrift it. store. Here it goes. Go yeah. ahead and tell the story. She, you know, first of all, getting her into a thrift store is not it's easy. Horrible. But we, it was in I Santa love... Barbara. Of course, hey, so... I mean, it's, it's the, <sighs> that's why the homeless look so good there. They're all wearing the rent. <laughs> it hurts, and, George. It hurts. And so I found this really expensive, like, I'd rather get a mammogram than go into a. And I said you could just wipe it off and and she went nuts. That's fucking and, hilarious. And, like a used yeah, lipstick. And, and it's and then used I, 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 lipstick, You know, you Vicky? just wipe it off. You it's don't like new when you just shaved it yeah. off. It was fine. It's almost then, like if you if you if you took the black part of the banana away. That's right. You still have a good banana. I bet my grandmother would go like this. Fucking banana is still good. Like, right. Fuck that thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. Exactly. But then we're it. passing. We're leaving after paid the lipstick. We're leaving, and I pa- I slowed down by the bathing suits, and she just grabbed me. No! <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, but it's always like that's hilarious. Yeah. Those, it was, uh, yeah, those bathing suits that had like the crush that had rubber. Yeah. <laughs> like that you fucking ball. And you wear them like for a whole summer and then oh you my. find the rubber at the yeah, end. Yeah. And you didn't remember oh to take God. off all balled up. Man. Oh, I hate that. Yeah, oh, yeah. The shit that we, yeah. you know, the, the, the highest form of sanitation when we were growing up was that when you went bowling, they fucking sprayed Lysol in the shoe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was right. it. That's it. And even if you said, what size are you? Uh, I'm an 11. He's an 11, and he's turning them back in. You'll wait to get the fucking still warm from him wearing them. And you're like, yeah, fuck it, yeah, I'll put them on. I mean, no, true. you know, the, what we've become yeah. is fucking crazy, man. Like, yeah. nobody, w- w- you know, my grandmother would say, if you, wear, if you put your shirt on inside out, it's bad luck to fucking turn it back outside in. So you, when you're a kid, you fucking put your shirt on backwards, and she would say, "Don't change it because it's bad luck." You're walking, <laughs> and every kid in school pulling your fucking tag all fucking day, and you're oh, trying to tear your own tag off. Yeah. You know? Thanks, Grandma. Oh my God! One time I uh, I saw a guy, and he had some five hundred ones on, and you know it'd say waist and the length, and he tried to uh, lower the 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 waist by putting pen on the. <laughs> on the <laughs> to change the he tried to change the number of his waist to a smaller number and fucking we're like is that fucking is, is that fucking pen down there you're trying to turn it into a fucking eight and they t- we tore his fucking that we out. tore his fucking label off of there running around the school holding the fucking oh, Levi God. tag in the air I mean I mean it's just like shit that kids did that yeah. that nobody would do oh, now I remember shit. I wore husky oh. pants from Sears the, oh, boys. the tough skins those fucking I bought my shoes at Hugh my grandma bought some shoes for me at Hughes at the market. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I mean, <sighs> fuck. Then we, and you didn't give a shit. I shopped for my kid's school clothes at the Lost and Found box at our school. Oh, and Emily that is one no day joke. goes, Mom, would you just maybe go to a different school? And I go, brilliant idea. So then I would start going to Del Mar to the better schools and get like really nice Harley shirt and be way better clothes. Because there's like two days but a year Vicky, where they give it all away. Vicky's the queen of return, too. She is so good at like beating the system like yeah. you have to be you have to be you got to raise kids on a comic salary you got to be clever yeah we i nicknamed i nicknamed vicky uh swindler's list yeah. oh because God. she oh, can just figure out hilarious. to outsmart anybody in retail i i've Amazing. never seen anything like it it's a gift yeah it's it's a job how did you learn that i had to i literally had i literally was living on you know the Literally, the money that you could leave your house and come back. My grandma, my mom could do this. I wasn't around my mom a lot, right? But my mom could leave and come back holding a new TV, and you're like, "Oh, you don't have a job." (laughs) I've never passed a a free sign without stopping and putting it in my car. I don't care what it is; I have to have it. I'll give it away, but yeah. And then you know, there's certain stores that have a very generous return policy. Um, I think I'm the one that put Mervin's out of business. I, you know, I know, Mervin's I, would, um, first of all, Mervin's gave everybody a credit card. That's right. And they would take anything back. That's right. And when they went out of business, I probably owed them eleven $1, hundred dollars. <laughs> I had the little Britannia uh, shirts, and I, I, and you know, it wasn't even much. Like it was like eleven dollars a month. I can't fucking pay that. No. You know, and there's the Mervin's over there on uh, on Roscoe and, uh, and and Laurel Canyon, and uh, I remember it, that it, they yeah. went out of business because. They gave everybody a credit card. You could fill it out right there. You're like, I'm not going to pass. Hey, congratulations. Here's your credit card. You go fucking crazy in the store. Yep. I, also, like, if you pay like $23 for a salmon at Whole Foods and you just, it's not quite as good as you thought, you should just, you know, you, you bring it back. You don't have to bring much back. You just have to bring a small amount back. And I feel like it's... it's That's I, yeah, fucking I just, hilarious. I just, well, you never did that. Did you do that? Take oh, it yeah. back? Yeah, salmon. 
I've done it. What? Yeah. Yeah. No way. Yeah, because yeah. it was so expensive. I'm like, it better be, you know, I'm unbelievable. And I, I thought it wasn't unbelievable enough. So I just bring a little bit back and they just hand you through. I no didn't think it was argument. unbelievable enough. Yeah. There's no argument. I believed it. And there's, that was a problem. There was no <laughs> argument. Yeah. There's never an argument. Uh, it's At this point, I'm I'm doing a little bit better. So I, uh, but I really do feel like all the swindling I did, I kind of uh, had no no way around it. No, but I mean, it wasn't swindled as much. Well, I think it was swindling. Well, it was but, 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 but also... There's a system to be worked, though. Yes, there is a, there's that. <clears throat> you know, and it clearly a lot of times I was within the system, and then I have to say it other times I was without the system. Right. And there's some guilt involved, but you know I just go to the priest every now. And but Vicky's so charming that so it it, it disarms yeah, the people. They don't know, and she's funny, and she's likable, and she's good people. So it, they don't see they don't see that. You know, when Jerry Seinfeld bought, they were telling me you know years ago that he bought a, a tuxedo. You know, he was very frugal. And he spent, you know, over a thousand dollars on a on a tuxedo, and they fit him. They fit him for it, and, and he's like, "Whoa!" And he, he, you know, he wears it at the event, and at the end of the night, he puts his hand in his pocket, and it says like, "Jerry B. Piven, Table 10. Like it, somebody had taken it back. <laughs> oh yeah. And yes. he bought. He thought he was buying like this this new tuxedo. But somebody had already worn it. Jeremy so Piven. And taken it back. That's hilarious. And they sold it to him as new. Ugh, I hope he got the money back for himself. <laughs> wow. I, I bought a free people jacket, which I, I looked for. A free, free, free. <laughs> that's fancy clothes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah. And, and I, I, I negotiated. I wanted this jacket for so many days and months and years. Finally, it went on sale. I bought it. I get home. It had a peso in it. I'm like, my jacket's been to Mexico. <laughs> and so I called the lady at Macy's. I called her up. I go, my jacket's been to Mexico. There's a peso in the pocket. And, and she goes, what do you want? I go, I I would like it for half the, what I paid, and I'll keep it. <laughs> and so and she goes, can you get here by 5 o'clock? I ran over to Macy's. Oh, it's fucking hilarious, man. Money. Oh, my but God. It's just what you have to do. You know when, when, when wearing, like, a Boy Scout shirt became, like, fashionable? Like, you could get a Cub Scout shirt? Yeah. You know, I think... Uh, who wore one? Like Flea wore one or somebody? Yeah. And uh, in high school, I, I got a, a, a Boy Scout shirt and I wore it to school one day. They're like, motherfucker, you're not on the Boy Scout. I said, it's fashion, puto. <laughs> <laughs> they still had the lodge number on it. And it's like, you know, no, it's like, it's it's, it's fashion. Yeah. They, 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 where, where are the pants at? It's like, I'm not a fucking Boy Scout. It's a fucking fashion. Wait, oh. You're like Fid Mints, anyone? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? You never get over those. High school and those oh, kid memories of wearing the wrong thing. So, oh, so uh, in the podcast, will you guys have uh, will you have guests? Eventually, we will have guests. Yeah. Like what kind of what kind well, of? Well, we had my Fifi, my French maid, uh, already, but um, <laughs> yeah. For right now, it's it's just uh, Vicky and I, and it's me living in Vicky's trailer park. Mm-hmm. And uh, what about you live in the trailer park too? In our pretend life. Okay. For the show. Yeah, it's a little bit it's a little bit improvised and then it's also a little bit fiction. But I think so, it's fascinating yeah. to even to 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 imagine that you would be there. It's right. really fun. I yeah. actually think she did move in sometimes. Uh, my sisters actually believe <laughs> I did. did. So awesome. they apparently they, they did. don't know they me. Went eight. <laughs> Shit. Ape they shit. Did. They did. They thought she got a divorce and moved into my trailer park. I'm like, oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. But I, d- but does anybody move out? Pretty nah, right? Only when they die. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's one of those like, no like you're, in, yeah, you're in, you're in. It's exactly. And especially like you don't that. want to give up. So if someone dies, can you like like checkers? Can you slide to another? That's how spot? I got my hard trailer. That's how I got the new one on the top of the hill. I watched their trash can for four <laughs> years. One day there was nothing in the trash. And I it's called true. the realtor. I'm like, I think something's up. I'm fucking no trash. Yeah. In there. yeah, she swooped in. I swooped in. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm so glad I did. You know, somebody that I know, the woman's husband died, and the guy walked over there in black, and he's like, I was at the service, and I just want you to know if there's anything that I can do for you, just let me know. I'm Peter. I was friends with your husband. Mm-hmm. And she's like, I don't know. Well, you know, this house is going to be too much. He fucking bought it. He Are didn't you go to the kidding? funeral. kidding? He went wow. over there and pretended he was at the service, oh. and he bought the woman's house when she was bereaved. Oh, that's a move. Oh, that's rough. That's yeah. a little low down. That's not like yeah. returning a shirt at Kohl's. No, no, no. That's, that's low down. I mean, when you do that, that's... You know, in the trailer yeah. park where I'm in now, a lot of the people go to the Alzheimer's care centers, and then this really is happening in my trailer park right now. Two people that are neighbors, the husband and wife from the different trailers, are in an Alzheimer's home. They started having an affair in the Alzheimer's home. And the people that still live in the houses, they're starting to affair, have an affair. And this <laughs> affair also broke up another affair that was going on. Wow. And now the ladies' club in our park had to separate the food giveaway day between the warring factions. Uh, it's, it's very dramatic. <laughs> I love it. Like Drama in the trailer. It's like Shakespeare. It so, is. so, so... 
Does the trailer park take the characteristics of the of the town? Like if like in San Fernando there was there was trailer parks over there. Yeah. Right? Did you live near a trailer park? Yeah. We would ride our bikes through there and uh, so that does take on the characteristics of of where it is? Sure. Like our trailer is in Oceanside, and Oceanside's a little more seedy than, say, the next town over, Carlsbad, which those trailer park people think that they're, you know, doesn't stink, yeah. which it does. And it's sickening. <laughs> it's boring. I hate them. Oh, I don't really hate them individually, but as a park. Um, <laughs> you know, they have a golf course attached. Yeah, you know, and yeah. our, our park is more seedy. They more do boring. have like a golf. Yeah. 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 And kids go up there and they're. Well, the, yeah. I used to live in a family park in Vista. It was a great park, great time, great time. Really good. So they have different parks, like they have yeah. senior parks, family parks, senior, and, th- and you are though they re- kind of reflect the area that's around. Yeah, them. her trailer has a lake and yeah. ducks. It's actually it's, a drainage it's, it's ditch. Really, but it looks like a lake. It's nice. <laughs> well, it's, there's it's, ducks. Is there an there. address, or you have to look at the number under the you know, like your space? I number. used to have space eleven in my last park, but this this one has two twenty five on my address, like a real street. Do you want to tell everyone exactly where you live? I do all the time. Good. No one ever comes. <laughs> <laughs> she does. I've seen her do it in her show where she's yeah. like, hey, if anyone say wants to see any of the men want to see no me after the show, she'll give her real hotel yeah. room. No one ever comes. I have to Somebody tell her. Somebody delivered a box of donuts once. That is all I ever <laughs> like. You're going to get <laughs> murdered, Vicky. You can't give your real. Like when I, I would go to her hotel, I'm like, you really gave the real number? And she'll do that. And I'm like, don't do that. Too many crazies. You know, so I was so I was in the lobby of the bad. hotel at the Four Seasons in uh, Austin, <laughs> and there was an old guy with like this Mexican girl that was beautiful, right? So we're looking at her, and we're like, "What the fuck is she thinking with being with that old dude, right?" An old so, guy with a young girl, girl George. Texas. What? This was when I was much younger. Yeah. So she goes upstairs, and then she comes down, and she says, "You know, you guys want to have a drink? I'd love to have a drink with you." And we have a couple of drinks, and I said, "I'm in." Uh, she goes, "What room are you in?" I said, "I'm in seven seven thirteen." So I go to 7.13, she goes, I'll be, I'll be right up. 7.13, I'm in there, I'm waiting for, you know, and nobody opened the door, looked down the hall, nothing. I'm just like, shit, shit, she's gonna be in here. So I look down, I look at the door, it's fucking 317. Oh! No! no. Damn you, no. dyslexia! Did you, did you run right up to the seventh floor? I was like, fuck! Oh, man! I mean, I really, uh, every day I'll invert, Oh yeah. I'll invert numbers because I, yeah. I, I just see numbers different. When Google, you know, sends your code to re-sign in, I fuck it up all the time. Yeah. 81, 7, it's like 178. <laughs> and still, you know, and, and when I found out maybe like, uh, I think maybe over 20 years ago, that, you know, my wife said, uh, you know, you could get tested and, you know, you can be corrected. And I thought, I don't think so. Because I think, you know, it's kind of part of your mental makeup. So that if you, you know, get retested and then you start thinking normal, maybe the part that, Things obscure or different than everybody else, you lose. Yeah, you know, there, there's a there's a there's a kind of a, an analytical thing to do what we do, and if you start to think like everybody else, then mm-hmm. you start you medicating lose that. your brain like that. Yeah, my one of my ex husbands used to leave a psychiatrist card on my pillow every single night when I go to bed like a candy. <laughs> every goddamn night there'd be a psychiatrist thing. For me to go to the psychiatrist. John, yeah, John, mm. and, and I, I was like, finally, I'm like, okay, I'll go. And it, it, and it was it turned out to be a really great experience. But I mean, I, I didn't get drugs or anything. She she just uh, she would laugh with me. It was what fun. services do they have at the at the trailer park? Like, do they have a rec room? Yeah. Oh yeah, we got a pool room, like a billiard room, a, you a beautiful pool. Yeah, upstairs we got a billiard room. I, should, I don't know. I should take you there. I'm sorry. You take me to the I know rec you really room. played pool, but um, we got a uh, then we got a, like a, a big multi-purpose room, and then we have the park around our fake lake and. And uh, that's it. And then we have like free food giveaway twice a week that the charities bring, which I think is really nice. One time my friend lived on Reseda and I was working during the day. And he goes, we got to come over to my place. It was a brand new apartment building. And we go down to the rec room and they had a couple pool tables. And at one pool table, all these guys had like the boot that was bigger than the heel was bigger than the other. Like one leg was shorter than the other. And they had... Uh, like those Forrest Gump braces on one leg and they were a little bit turned kind of like this and there was like five guys but they were all like in their 20s mm-hmm. and they all weren't bad looking guys it's just they were a bit disabled hmm. you know, they were kind of like sideways and every one of their girlfriends was fucking beautiful Wow! and we would be playing pool and we'd be looking over and they'd be like kissing these guys and we'd be looking at each other. <laughs> Got to get a bit disabled. I said to that dude, take this fucking pool cue and hit me right in the middle, <laughs> right in the middle of my fucking back. 
I'll steal one of these girls away from those guys. Oh, that's awesome. But you're just like, what the fuck is going on? And it's almost like if it was like set up like that. Yeah. I mean, never seen anything like it. Those guys would walk around with the big, like, I mean, like seven inches of rubber, and the other one was like a flat. Oh. And you're just like, what the fuck? What, what fucking club? Amazing. What fucking club is this? These guys go to and pull these fine chicks. <laughs> Maybe they had big settlements or something. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> they're all they're all in the same accident. <laughs> man, that's pretty wild, man. You know, Gil, Gil, uh, you never lived in a trailer park or anything, huh? No, he's lived in the same house for 48 years. Seriously, wow. did you buy your folks' house or something? Or you, no, no, you, I bought the uh, first house I ever bought after I've been married three years. Bought the house, and that was it. Oh, that did you build on to it as as years went by? Uh, I modernized it and put a bigger bay room and with a, with, with, the, with an inspector or not? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> permits and everything. Well, that's that's <laughs> My awesome. My daughter lives in the house that I grew up in. Wow, she wanted to buy it because she just said. Dad, I want to invest. Uh, I don't have kids. I don't have a husband, but I want. I see all my friends. They're getting married and they're living in an apartment. So I just want to Smart. invest in something and have something when the time is right. So now she's got two kids. And, and she bought her grandparents' house. Yeah, that's beautiful. I love that. Yeah, so she, she paid. The, uh, it's paid off. It's paid off, right? No, that was not paid off. I sold it and then divvied up the money between my so, my other sisters. You know, my grandfather uh, was trying to teach me, you know, to be responsible. And he was charging me like fifty dollars a month rent, and I was working, you know, during the week, and I was a thousand dollars behind. I mean, thank God he died. I would have never fucking. <laughs> I said, that he motherfucker died. died. I said, yeah. he, he, said, oh. he said, fell down I, the stairs. I, the I said, shit, I would have never fucking paid him. He just give me some, just give me a little bit every week. I'm like, this guy's fucking hounding me, man, for fifty dollars so a month. So funny. But so I cool. died. I, I, he died. I, I, I owed him. I was in the, I was in the hole. Uh, Put it on my Mervin's card. And you know, yeah, he, he, yeah. He, uh, he was a, he he worked in he used to dig ditches and stuff and, and stuff like that. So in the house in the back, they they added a bathroom, but it uh, was not through an inspector. You know, right. so uh, they would be digging in the back, and then you know uh, over time, you know, I'm like, uh, hey man, what happened to my bike that was back here? He goes, I didn't see a bike that was back here. I said, yeah, yeah, I had a bike right here. He's like, I don't know, but somebody stole it, you know, somebody took it. And years later, they were doing something in the back with the with the sewage had had broken and the city came in there. My grandmother lived there. And I went over there and they were digging in. My fucking grandfather threw the bike in the hole <gasps> to fill it up because they didn't have enough dirt. Oh so no. So he threw my bike in the fucking <laughs> trench oh, almost like as filling. So that when oh, they put the dirt in, oh my God. and there it was, my f- fucking bike caked. Oh, that's horrible. Caked in mud. That's pretty cheap. Oh, my God. My <laughs> like 15 I years that. later. Like that's that brutal. son of a bitch. God, tough. That's what I get for fucking uh, ditching Thank them God for God, your life bucks. turned out okay. Dude, that shit is, I should dig around the hole. I could probably find my birth certificate back there. <laughs> well, my oh. grandpa was the size of a hobbit, so he couldn't even pick up a bike and throw it. Like, he was a little, little man, Grandpa Max, so... Grandpa God, Max. Grandpa Max, and yeah. What did, and what did he do? He, well, um, I don't know what Grandpa Max actually did. I, besides be a grandpa, but he always know, had scotch in his hand. That's what, <laughs> and he told jokes. And he loved, he loved the World, Res- World Wrestling Federation. And he would take mm-hmm. us to those. And he actually wow. had a heart attack and died at one. What? Good way to go. My cousin was with him. Oh, so, wow. Yeah. My dad died in the casino, too. Gambling. He died did? Died happy. Oh, Yeah. He was a, every, th- with one leg at Barona. Too, her dad. Yeah, and there's a sign in San Diego. What would your Barona moment be? And I go, oh. I got one. <laughs> <laughs> but he died he happy. Did? I mean, I want to die happy. I want to die in a bakery having a threesome with a fireman and a chocolate <laughs> clair. I want to be like that. You know? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, think I, about I guess, that. right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't yeah. want to die throwing my grandson's bike in a freaking hole. That's no, a whole. It's awful. I'm so as a grandma. And he knew I was fucking looking for it. He still didn't uh, say, "Oh no." Oh, he knew where it was. Yeah. Jeez, he saw me looking bike. for it. He made me fucking look for <laughs> These it. Guys were tough. Oh, really? yeah. He's like, "Go around the neighborhood. You'll he find it." He made you look for it. Fuck it in the hole. Sign. It's fucking in the hole. Oh, that's terrible. Yeah. I'm Very so different sorry. now, you know. I'm it's be funny sad too for because week. you know if you look back on you know growing up like in the '70s or or things like that, like I could still see. You know the Pop Warner team, you know practicing in the feet in the park, and you know playing literally with my friends yeah. and all that stuff. That's still very vivid, you know. And right. I think kids now, no. I'm not sure if 
their what their memories will be of their childhood. And their moms were so tense. Like my mom and her friends, and I grew up in Fountain Valley, you know, for not until I was twelve by Huntington Beach over there. And my mom and her friends always brought flasks on field trips. You know, that's just what yeah. they did. And now, you know, the tension for the young moms so different. You know, oh, I yeah. brought one on a field trip. And I never heard the end. It's just, um, <laughs> it's like the the way it is for kids today. The parents are so tense. You know, I just watched my daughters be parents, and it's just like the parameters are oh, so tight. Oh, very different. Nobody Let me can. tell you, the, we, there was a, I'm not going to say the guy's name, but in when we were in elementary school, he lived on the other street, a little cul-de-sac, and his mom, this was in the early 70s, his mom looked like a Mexican Mary Tyler Moore. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I used to wear the tight pants, and she would wear a white blouse, but you could see her bra through the oh. through the blouse. And it was in that time when the ladies had like the pointy. Yes. I tried to fuck a Chrysler bumper. <laughs> <laughs> they used to have those, the rounded oh, off. Oh yes. Oh man, the Is pointed, the pointed, like the pointed bra. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think it was a round long, but it, like it, Madonna wore, like that. Well, yeah, but you know, like, but the, like, yeah, it was pointy. And, yeah. But what, what was that? What was that look? Like guys never had a pointy. Cup, it was always rounded. You took off, a moment you know? on that yeah. one. Yeah. I think that. But you I mean, but I mean it was like it yeah. was like like sure. like, like yeah. on both of them. So they mm-hmm. would be like, and you're just like, whoa, yeah, man. yeah. They were Here so they are, sexy. And, and nobody had a mom that was attractive, and fucking guys Saw would one. be across the street, and you know they'd see her driving in the neighborhood. They'd kind of fucking go down there and watch her take the groceries out. Of, oh my god. <laughs> so she was not just a milf; she was a mmm, yeah, like a Mexican god. milf, like. <laughs> She Two was ends. Hot, man. Mm. She was hot. You never forget a woman she like was. that. We had one in our neighborhood, Betty. We had one in our <laughs> neighborhood. <laughs> one, of your mom, yeah. one of your friend's mom? Yeah. He went on to be an attorney. We had the Helms Bakery man that was trying to put the push on her. Ah, the Helms <laughs> Bakery man. The and Bakery I remember as a kid, yeah. I'd, go, I'd walk around the cul de sac because I lived on a dead end street. <laughs> <laughs> Here walking around in her bra and so oh. Gil creeping. Mm-hmm. <laughs> when uh, <laughs> Just uh, guy. when I lived there, when I first got married, I lived in a condo and and on occasion in the morning, you could look down and the girl you would see the girl walk past the bathroom like naked, and I would be in the living room with the lights off and my wife came up behind me. She goes, "What are you doing?" It's like you put a fucking hole in the in the ceiling. Yeah. I jump. <laughs> I'm watching like this. I don't see anybody here, anybody behind me. She goes, what are you doing? Fucking <laughs> scared the shit out of me. It's when we lit. first moved to our, our trailer with my daughters, you know, I wasn't used to being in a trailer, and the whole front is glass, two giant glass windows in the old-style trailers. And one morning I was walking around naked in the... In the uh, <laughs> and my daughter Emily goes, Mom, the poor gardeners! <laughs> they were out there. Uh. I'm like, <laughs> but, you know, I mean, you know... Now I think if 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 a friend walked through and saw like the mom, I mean yeah. he would tell his mom and they would fucking call, call the police. The police yeah. And, yeah, you know. Yeah, you just can't masturbate anymore. And somebody goes, ah, there's kids being kids. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you, yes, you can. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they yeah. fire one off in the park. I tried to drive one time and jack off. And I'm going to fucking sideswipe some fucking truck <laughs> on the 14 freeway. I'm like, do I, really, do I really can't wait 20 minutes to get home? I got to jack oh, off right now God. at the so 14 funny. and the 5 interchange. Oh, my God. <laughs> that's gotta love that. That's men. where the term jack off came from. That's funny. I guess I mean, if I had one, I would. But it's a little tougher for us. You know, when you've seen your dick your whole life and you've seen it in it, all its glory as a young man. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when you wake up in the morning and you have a boner, you don't even know any girls. Right. And there it is and you clean it and it's just this, you know, it's full of blood. Is it cut? It, it, it's cut. Good. And then when you're old and you see it just fucking dangling there like some old fucking <laughs> windsock that somebody forgot when they moved, like a fish. Remember how people have those fish flags? It's just like some... It's just the some, religious fish it's flags that we're talking thing. about. Oh, you know, the... the, the oh, I thought he was talking about the fish it's, yeah. got, it's just dangling. Hang, it's just oh, hanging. Yeah. And you're like, man, I mean, it's just... You hate to see... It's, it is you, a sad you remember, thing. You remember when you were young, you know, and you're yeah. like, just get hard for fucking... Yeah. just. For anything. That's a good thing about being a girl and you can't see anything down there unless you really contort yourself. <laughs> yeah. But I know it's uh, it's not what it used to be. Yeah. It, it, to, get old is, uh, to get old is, to get old is, it's not easy to get old. Terrible. It's awful. <laughs> Terrible. You know, I'll tell there, you guys it is, it happens. is, but there's also so many <laughs> great things about it. Like you can just tell people that you won't do anything that they want you to do anymore. It's just like you just don't <laughs> yeah. care. Mm, that's true. 
but yeah. Well, you know what? My sh- my show is like almost twenty years. So I'm twenty years older. I mean, I was fifty. I was forty one when the show right, started, right. and then uh, I'm sixty. But when people see me, they'll see you in the morning when you're forty three, right? And then see me in the afternoon when I'm sixty, and they'll be like, "Are you George Lopez?" And I'm like, yeah, who, who do I look like? He goes, oh, man, you got old. I said, motherfucker, you know, I'm fucking 60, motherfucker. I was 43 this morning when you saw me. I'm fucking 60 in real life. And they're wow. just like, man, your hair's white. And but men, like, men are so lucky because you get more distinguished looking, you know? We just get more haggard like and without a lot of work, which I'm not doing. You know, I, 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 mean, you, I, I remember Pancho Gonzalez, uh, that, that tennis player. Was dark skinned and he had he had gray hair and I was like, man, that motherfucker looks cool. That's hot, right? And I'm becoming, I think, that you kind of punch your guns. I mean, it is uh, true. You look really hot, and it, it, with us, we let the hair go gray, and it's like, oh my god, just <laughs> yeah. just drive into a cliff. Yeah, it's don't a, do it. I, know. I have a friend who let her hair go gray, and I'm like, I, I'm not hanging around with you, hag. I'm yeah. I, I'm not dyeing this orange <laughs> and, and going around with you. I'm well, you not, don't dye your hair, do you? Are, are you kidding me? Of course I do. All of it, everything matches. Yeah, but yeah. But I bought her a scarf. I mean, I'm not. If I'm going to be with you, I'm not going to. I'm not going to age 20 years. You look, you look good, though. Why do you keep oh, pointing thanks. at me when you say you aging? You look great because she, looks, guys, she takes care of things. I mean, she has work done. She's but you perfect. Got, you do? Well, I mean, but, just no. the basics. Just the basics. <laughs> Man, look, look, at my, look at my nose. That's still the same. I mean, it's laser, You know what? To get, to get a nose Botox. job is is not easy. Right. I mean, I, even, though they've, even though they've uh, had many, many years to perfect it, I know somebody, a guy that had his nose done because... He couldn't breathe through it, and it fucked him up worse. Imagine. Oh, bummer. Oh, I mean, yeah. Imagine the... you go to a, your transmission is not working in your car, and the guy's like, "Hey, man, we fucked your transmission." It's like, motherfucker, you do. You're you're in the transmission business. How can you fuck my car? Like they they still because I think it's still the nose or whatever. But this guy is. I mean, he has to go and get it done Ugh. all over again. Ugh. Yeah, but it's kind of a rite of passage, especially at the, the bar mitzvah age. It's. It was like, do you want to get a nose job? Do you want to get that done? And oh, shit. I, you know, I kept mine just in case Streisand dies tragically in a boating accident, <laughs> and they need me to play her for the, the biopic movie. <laughs> so, uh, but it, it's a thing. I mean, I've, I've seen good ones, and, and I've seen bad ones. Can you breathe out of it and everything? It still works. Oh yeah, it still works. I mean, my husband, I sometimes is like, <laughs> you were snoring last night, you crazy? And I'm like, what? What? And he's like, you were snoring. So once in a while. I'm but sure when you get older, up. people snore like my my. When I was married, my wife, and this is, I got up at six forty five in the morning on a Sunday morning, and you hear this. <sighs> I look outside. I go, they fucking trimming the trees <laughs> on a Sunday. I swear yeah. to God, it sounded like they were trimming yeah. the trees, and 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 she snored so fucking loud. And one time we we took our daughter up to uh, uh, Carpinteria for the school, and everybody uh, slept outside. And it was me and Maya, and they go, where's Ann? And we had a minivan with the two doors, and I hit the fucking door to open, and as it opens, you're like, <laughs> 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 You're like, that's that. where she is. She fucking slept. She was the only parent that slept in the fucking minivan. <laughs> Everybody else was outside, and just you could fucking faintly hear it with Shook both. all night, oh, man. <laughs> That's so wild. Man, you got to get in the fucking car, man. Everybody's like, Ann, get your ass in that van because nobody's going to be able to sleep. Oh, it's <laughs> tough. When you're with the, I had one husband, he snored so loud the door would open and close. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. People, people videoed it, yeah. But you know, I went and had my nose looked at the, with the doctor and he said, uh, he said, when did, you, when did you break your nose? I had no idea I broke my nose. No idea. Right, so why, we had why? no idea you put the balls on that poster either. Oh, yeah. So you know, <laughs> probably easily right. could have been. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. But he knew. He knew the minute he looked. It's like he got under. They put like some to, to numb it. And he's like, "When did you break your nose?" I mean, maybe during baseball. I remember when you're playing basketball, they pass it or it might reflect off somebody hit you or football or something. But you know. I didn't know. I didn't know when. Or I broke my nose it, three times, and I'm like one of those birds that don't see windows. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I've publicly, <laughs> publicly at a we- wedding, um, at walked a hotel, into, walked I into, walked oh. right into like Rocky Balboa, like choo, Boom. and it's. And I that's had fucking to, da- yeah. that's dangerous. It's it oh, yeah. hurts. And they'll put those little fucking daisies, and you're like, "What are those for?" Right. And then you see like the side of somebody, <laughs> right. the, the oil of somebody's face yeah. on the side. You would think I got glasses by now, but no, it just <sighs> it's it's very painful. Yeah, you don't wear glasses? Not yet. Wow. 
Not yet. Reading glasses sometimes when it's really, really tiny, tiny writing. You know, you will never, you will never s- succumb to the pressure of using glasses when you need them. Because somebody saw me and I had my mouth open, you know, my... <laughs> Your text is like this big. <laughs> and they're like, uh, what are you doing? I said, I'm fucking trying to see what this is. <laughs> and they and my font is still like a number four. And they're like, increase the font. I'm like, fuck you, man. I'm not blind. But I, I wouldn't even increase the font because if you increase the font, then what are you? Mm-hmm. Now you're increasing the font. You're blind. Next thing, you're going to have a... a, a, a a little chair in the living room that has a place where you can take a shit in there and they yeah. roll it back on the side. It's the yeah. next step. You know, I grew up <laughs> right. with, with a friend of mine that his grandfather lived with him and they, he had a hospital bed, but it didn't fit in the room. So in the middle of the fucking living, living room, room. The, it had the hospital bed in the oh, living God. room. So the whole be watching a movie and the grandfather would be in the middle of the of the living room with a fucking hospital bed. He goes, don't tell me what's going to happen. He would fucking move the thing back and come back up. I mean, and then this, full, this full-size hospital bed with a little urine bag on the side. And yeah. you're just like, man, you know, in somebody's house. When somebody's like that in the house, it can't help but smell like. Yeah. I mean, Terrible. the hospitals, yeah, they're always cleaning, but, they, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, I, <laughs> don't let me have a hospital bed in the middle of the middle. You can't have a no. hospital bed in no. someone's house. Yeah. No. Uh, yeah, well, if that's all you can afford, sometimes you just have to get a used hospital bed. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's, a, there's a lady that I work that I, I know that, like, she's told me that she started to uh, uh, donate some time at, like, an old folks home, and she, she, she finds it very worthwhile. Yeah. Because nobody goes to see him, oh. you know, and that she has a couple hours a week that she does that stuff and 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 she said like i i enjoy it like i didn't think that i it was something that i would do mm. and she just started doing it that's and that's so uh, cool yeah cuz they're so lonely my husband Lou plays piano before covid in the nursing homes on some afternoons and he just loves it and you know i think it's so nice i mean i it's i in- love old, i love older people but it's it's incredible like what they're doing today with senior living you have right. to be bobo rockefeller to I get know. a place like if yeah, you yeah. Are, you, know, you got your wits about you, and you're yeah. like, you know what? I can't handle this big right. house. You're empty nesting. It's, you're older, right. and you want to find a place. It's like you got to have a gazillion dollars just to put down. Then you're paying rent on top. I just went to visit my aunt and uncle in Phoenix, and they just moved into a senior living place. It was like a cruise ship on land. There are 10 fancy restaurants you can make wow. a reservation at. There was a golf course. There's a pool. They had like the Amundsen Theater. They're, like wow. It was so... There I'm going to be in a hospital bed on my kid's back porch. Oh, in the living room. Because they're not going to let me in the living room. In the lanai That's out what's there with the screen, screen yeah. in. The lanai. <laughs> remember the lanai. that? They had a lanai. Yeah. pull you Fresh into the air. living room. My grandma would say, why don't you go play in the lanai? I'm like, what the fuck? What the lanai? It's a track hole called lanai. Lanai. She heard on Hawaii 5 or some shit. That's funny. Somebody else fucking screened in back to back area. It's so golden girl. I don't even know how lanai. Yeah. All that stuff. That's a funny word. Yeah, it's. But you know what? I could always end up in the in the uh, w- when I had my talk show. We went over to the to the actor's home. Yeah. And uh, you know, there's people that you know the actors that live in it, but there's people that you remember from movies and TV. Wow. And they're in their and they're in their living in there. That's so beautiful. And they, you know, they take care of them and all that stuff. And you see some lady walk by, you're like, mm-hmm. the, remember the Is lady from Turner? Wedding Singer? That old lady, she was in there. <laughs> wow. Wow. I thought, oh my God. Oh, how fun. And yeah. it's like people that you know, you're like, oh, shit, that's mm. so-and-so. I think when they're pretty young now, I think, because if you don't have any any family and stuff like that, like you're going to need to, you know. I, th- I think us, you know, are you, I, so you are, do you spend a lot of time alone? Do you guys spend time alone or do you, pre- do you prefer to be alone or you like people around you? I love uh, my kids. Yeah. I, like I always kids. have a lot of gay men around me at yeah. all times. Yeah. Yeah. a lot of gays. Yeah. I have a small amount of gays. She has a thousand gays. I think, yeah. Right I think it, th- <laughs> but those are, listen, if gay people like you, those are the yeah. real fans. Well, those are the yeah. ones that are going to take, I don't have any children, so I just kind of keep <laughs> befriending younger and younger gay men. Yeah. I'm like, what? You're 18? <laughs> you can take care of me when I'm older. <laughs> like, that's just what, they're going to be my kids. Yeah. Did you, did you, were you afraid of having a child? Did you think about it? Because I think that, um, I think that it's, I mean. No, I never was afraid. I mean, it's, as a girl, do, do you grow up thinking about 
being a mom when you're when you're growing up, right? Always. With dolls and all that stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're that's you're taught that yeah. very young, especially growing up in Oklahoma. It was like when you you know yeah when are you getting married? When are you having kids? I'm 14. Like that's <laughs> right. a whole it's you're a whole late. thing. And I love children. <laughs> and I just I got married a little bit later in life, and then you know at some point we just. At this point, we're kind of right. just discussing maybe adoption or fostering ah. and helping a child. So I never rule it out, but I really do appreciate children and love them. And I like I like big She's families. She's everybody's aunt. Were you I in, the, were you in the room when your, your children were delivered? Uh, uh, back in those two days. Of, two of them one was. Yeah. But back in the early days... The guy with the f- the husband would wait outside and smoke cigarettes. And he'd knock on the door. The oh, fuck! Come on! I had one guy who wouldn't even drive me to the hospital. He's like, it's too early. He literally wouldn't drive me. I had to call my mother. He's like, it's too early. I can't get up. So you know, when I was at another another time after the show drinking, and you know, I would always talk to my friends, and I go, Man, do I sound like I'm drunk? And they're like, no, because I, I got to call home. You know, I have to call. Home. <laughs> so I, I, I go, I got to call home, man. So I don't sound like I'm drunk. They go, no, no, no. So I call. And my wife would be like, have you been drinking? I mean, I always drank. But yeah. that, that, sometimes when it was really bad, you had to pretend like at least, uh-huh. You know, you had to. <laughs> so I'm talking to her in the car. I don't remember what I said. And then the next day, I call her like at one. And she goes, I've been thinking about what you said last night. I said, oh, yeah? And she's like, yeah, were you serious? And I said, um, yeah, I'm serious. You really? Because I, th- I didn't think you wanted to. And I'm like, uh, no, you know, listen, if I, say, if I say it, then, you know, I'm serious about it. And I don't have no fucking oh, idea man. what she's talking about. But I mean, oh, what could it be? It had to be something that, <laughs> you know. So I said, uh, uh, yeah, I'm serious. She goes, you really want to go to Tijuana and adopt a Mexican kid? <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck? I said, what the fuck? Last night you said you want to go to Tijuana and adopt a little Mexican kid. I said, fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> fucking bullshit. I got little Mexican kids here. <laughs> <laughs> Why would I go over there and get one? But I guess I was Shop like, "Shop local, George." I, 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 yeah, I never yeah. wanted to. Yeah, I never wanted to adopt it. I guess uh, that night, I, I don't know how she got me. I was like, "Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll pick one out, <laughs> come down, you know, like a fucking Christmas tree." If only treat. it were that easy. Yeah. yeah, I don't know, man. I mean, Howard. I remember Howard Stern said, like, when you adopt, when you adopt a kid, like, you you don't know what the genes what the genes are. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, it, no, my family would definitely be an improvement. So I would be like, <laughs> and we can barely walk upright. So I think that for any of our family. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Well, ladies, it's been uh, it's been a blast, man. You guys are, you guys are great. Thank well, you thank so you for, much having for having us. us. It's really been a pleasure. Yeah. Yeah, letting us tell the world about Trailer Park Diaries. Yeah, do you, and, you tell uh, them where they can yeah. find it yeah. and, and what, what it's going to be about. Yeah, exactly. Tell the people your social Thanks. media handles, all that sort of stuff. And congratulations, Greg. You guys have over fifty episodes already, and it's been so much fun listening to you guys. Yeah. Oh, thank so you. We're inspired. Yeah. Yes, so yeah, you can listen to us on all the podcasts. Uh, yeah, it's platforms. called Trailer Park Diaries. Yeah. And uh, it premieres March twenty second. Will it be salacious? And, and we and we uh, give a cocktail recipe at the beginning of each show oh. that we created for each. We episode. like to drink. Yeah. Okay. So, g- there, yeah. give, give up. Give Either way, I love this. Do you? You could mix George that with Lopez. like tequila. Yeah. Oh my God. Uh, give oh. me a cocktail, something Sanguifus. with vodka for the house. Okay. Well, oh, we have do the, the Berta on, things. The Berta tray. Oh yeah, this is true. This is a thrill gift to you. you um, you take a Brita filter. And the cheapest vodka you can lay your hands on, like, you know, the cheapest vodka you can find. Pop off. Uh, pop off. A, or, and you oh. run that through a Brita filter four to six times. I'm not kidding you. It is as smooth as glass, and you pour that into an empty Grey Goose bottle to share with your friends. <laughs> <laughs> They'll never know. They'll never Are know. Are you serious? Oh, yeah. I got a whole bunch of fake Tito's right now at the trailer. Yeah. No one will know, except I just told it. Swindler's everyone. List. Yeah. <laughs> That's just thing. But wait a minute. What does the filter do? Like, it, it, it removes takes all, what? It takes all the hard, hardness out of the vodka, and it runs. You know how the cheap vodkas taste all hardy? You run it through. I, I actually learned it, learned it years ago from a friend of mine who's an artist and has all these art shows in L.A. with rich people. So he learned how to filter what? the vodka, and so I've been just doing it ever since. It's amazing. Yeah. That's pretty fucking ghetto, though. I mean. <laughs> well. Well. I mean, but it's good. I mean, it it's is nice. It, so it, just it, saying. It filters. It the, when you're this is the what money, we though, teach you cool. on Trailer it's Park it's, Diary. Yeah, <laughs> through a Brita filter. Yeah. I mean, come on. Four to six times. You can't mess around. You can't just... What's the worst vodka? Pop-off or Kamchatka? Yeah. Oh, I haven't had Kamchatka. One. I buy a lot of them at Grocery Outlet. They don't even have names. <laughs> Did you guys hear that they're changing the name of Stolichnaya outside of Russia? They're, they're going to just call it Stoli from now on. Yes, I heard that. Yeah. Oh, they're going to take the rush Good out idea. Of it? Yeah. Well, there's something going well, what, on. Uh, the same motherfuckers that said freedom fries instead of French fries? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're the ones. Do- <laughs> I, mean, I mean, come on. Uh, you, you know, uh, uh, 
There was a guy that, uh, Ivan, the guy that lived across uh, the alley from me, and he was pickled, man, this dude. And his wife was always up his ass. He had a trailer on the side of his house, and I'd go in there and, and mess around. You know, we'd go and watch TV. He's a gun collector, and we'd go in there. And he was a cool dude. He had a big-ass stomach, like, extended from drinking. And um, she would be fucking yelling at him, and the door would be open, and he'd go, George. Don't ever get married, man. Uh It's a son of a bitch. You hear that shit? I got to hear that shit every Uh day. He goes, that's why I drink. Look at me. I'm all red. He was fucking red from Uh just drinking. And we had a a, a small gate at the house. And he came over one time looking for my grandfather. And the gate was locked. And that big motherfucker jumped over that Uh gate like a high hurdle. (laughs) And you were like, what the fuck? I said, whatever he's drinking gives you the ability to fucking leap small gates. That's fabulous. I mean, that guy did not look like he could fucking move at all. And he gets over there and like Dwight Stone, like a scissor kick over the fucking <laughs> And my grandmother and I looked at each other like, did you see that? I mean, that motherfucker jumped over the gate. That's awesome. Never seen it before. Is never seen anybody do it. After I tried to do it before I sold the, my grandmother's house, I, could, I couldn't do it. And that motherfucker in one move. That's beautiful. Scissor or kick that gate and jump <laughs> over. Oh he might have been drinking Brita vodka. He, he, he was, uh, yeah, he, he was kick. pickled, but he was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you were telling us about sex on the countertop? Was that the, the Sex drink? on the countertop was a, a good drink that we did. We also did, uh, we had so many fun uh, the trailer teeny. Thing. I know that. Yeah, we did the trailer teeny. Yeah, we just, oh, what, what's uh, a trailer? Is it all kind of low level? Can it, you give yeah. by with some? We had, what, what did we have? The, uh, the, sh- Shirley Temple Beth Om. Yeah. What was the one with the banana we did? Hard on banana. Oh, that was the um, penis colada. Penis colada. The penis colada. The penis colada was very good. And they are actually really good drinks, and we're going to teach everybody how to make them at the beginning of episode. Yeah, we get I creative. Think, yeah, I think yeah. that's good. Yeah. I think that's good. I don't think people, I don't think people, you know, my neighbor over there, Ralph, uh, when I lived in Sherman Oaks, would say, hey, Joe, how about a highball? Like in the afternoon, <laughs> we had these highball high glasses, and he would come out. And I would go back into the house and Anne would be like, are you fucked up? I said, fucking Ralph, man, give me a highball, I'm all fucked up. Because yeah. you did like, it's time, like highball time was like, what, four o'clock in the afternoon? Yeah. And, uh, and. Uh, I haven't thought of a highball forever. A highball awesome. glass. Yeah. Spin on what, what, what's the difference between a highball and a, and a thing? And a, Martin. and a thing, that's a Mexican coming out. But then between a thing and the other highball. I mean, I mean, he had the long, I mean, he had the, he had, he had, he'd come in with the tray. The cart and everything. And the tray to get caught in the fucking carpet. Uh, and the little thing with ice and all that. So he had the long. Oh, man. Yeah. The, yeah. Oh, I love it. So I found it. The difference between, so a highball refers to like, particularly if it's in a tall glass. Mm-hmm. So like it minimizes the bubbles and oh. it keeps the bubbles in there. As opposed to a low ball, which is like a whiskey glass where you want to get more of like the, or the aroma. And smell. You know, when oh. you get older. That's Low ball. See? Yeah. The low ball. He knows everything. I googled it. It's easy. <laughs> Hanging the toilet ball. <laughs> but nobody, nobody does like it. Like in, like in Europe, it's tea time, like at four, right? I mean, it's just a, and they take the siesta in uh, Spain. Oh, okay. But here in America, when you're working class, nobody ever takes a, a break at four to. In Spain, they, they're more, they're productive. They look oh, at you. Oh, he slept exactly. for the last hour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a siesta here. <laughs> Right on. I'm going to take a nap after this delicious thing. Yeah. Uh, so do you, do you still have that restaurant at San Miguel? Do you actually yeah. have it? Yeah. Do you, are you Did involved you with the food there? No, I heard about some friends, though. But you... Yeah, yeah. I mean, we put the menu together, the, yeah. Oh, my God. Did oh they like God. it? Yeah. It's pretty good. Yeah, they're like bragging. I'm like... Yeah, it's pretty good. They go, good. I went to his restaurant. Because yeah. I thought he'd be on your show. They go, I went to his... Re-. I go, I went to his... I didn't think that, it, that that stuff, like, that whole stuff just happened so, so fast, cool. you know, since, mm-hmm. like, 2015. But you know, there's beer, and then there's there's tequila that's coming out, and the nice. restaurants are doing great. And this you know, is incredible. I've never had anything like we're it. Not mad oh, at beer man. or tequila. Well, I'm glad that you guys like that. I wonder why. I wonder why you guys like that, and most people, I guess, it, is it sour to you? What does it taste like? I mm, it's the I, I like it. I'm it's big, dry. It's dry to me. It's dry. I like. I'm a big fan of sour. Yeah, like she loves sour. I love patch sour candy, candy and sour. I like brute champagnes and brute things. So it's yeah, it's really good. Yeah, it has a. A little rosé. Yeah. It's I, feeling, I want to see what it looks like in a glass. You, you, you know? know? Yeah, it's yeah. Like it's, it's, it's like that color, yeah. yeah. D.L. Hughley would drink, uh, is it Manhattan's that have like a banana in there? No, Old Fashioned? <laughs> a banana? Oh, uh, no. Old Fashioned has some fruit in oh, it or, or something. Or a hearty wall banger. they have uh, olives in an Old Fashioned? I think an Old Fashioned. Like, like burn like the outside of, yeah. a, of an orange or something like that. Right. Oh, yeah. I yeah, drank, like an orange twist. We yeah. were in Detroit and I drank, it's all sugar. 
he, I, I had a spinach salad and two of those drinks. I had to go to the fucking hospital with pancreatitis. <laughs> yeah. That motherfucker, the doctor's like, what the fuck did you eat, man? I said, hey, the spinach salad and two old fashions. That motherfucker, no wonder, motherfucker, because shit. They fucking hook them up. I mean, That's I, I mean, I couldn't, st- I couldn't fucking stand up right. What the fuck is this? I love this because it does not have the calories on the can. I never want to know. Which you you have, you have to look at. Wait till you're drinking. It's at the bottom. Yeah. Is it the bottom? <laughs> Information at the bottom. I'm still not seeing it. But yeah. I'm well, listen. Up. I wish you guys you. Uh, good. If I could ever, you know, appear, I'd bring Gil with me. Oh, thanks. Thank a lot. you. We love that. Of Gonna course. have to appear in the trailer park. We of course yeah, love that. Trailer park. I'll be hopefully uh, more alert. We need more alerts uh, today. Yeah. <laughs> we need more alerts. I love that. <laughs> thanks, thanks, Gil. Thanks, yeah. Gil. You guys have been it's so charming. Been a thank lot you. of fun. You're thank you welcome. for having us. Thanks so much. Thank you. Good luck thank with you. the podcast. Thanks, Grant. Thank thanks. you.